Hi everyone, it's Steve here once again from the UK R2 Builders Club and this is the third in the series of how to build a Padawan 360 uh, robotics control system. Uh, so what we're doing today is talking about uh, basic layout setup uh, and some connectivity to your electrics and your uh, your battery system within your droid. Uh, what I tend to do is lay things out, first of all, loosely just on a board. Now, I'm using something called Fomex, which is a, uh, a type of uh, lightweight, uh, low-density plastic. Um, it's easy to work with, and I happen to have a little supply available. Um, a lot of people tend to use uh, breadboards or chopping boards. Um, basically, whatever's going to fit in your board, uh, in your droid, I beg your pardon, and also make sure that it's non-conductive. So don't use uh, something metal uh, because it's very easy to create shorts and things like that. So I'm just going to run through the components each in turn just to make sure that we've got everything here and just to identify things for you. First of all, we're starting with a fuse board. Uh, now this one takes one single input and then can distribute that through six different fuses out to uh, obviously six different devices. So we're going to be using that. Uh, this is a mono amplifier which runs at um, anything up to 24 volts. We're going to be running it at 12 volts and you have an in uh, over here. This is your input, this is your power and this is your output to your speaker. Uh, above it, we have the um, Arduino Uno and the host shield on top. Then we have the SparkFun MP3 player. Next, we have the Siren 10, uh, the Sabertooth 32, a mains power switch, and the Xbox USB dongle. Something that's also handy to have is these uh, little plastic standoff and screw sets. Uh, these can be had very cheaply on the likes of AliExpress and eBay. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to stand off some of these components so they're not actually sitting on the board itself. Uh, that gives us two advantages. Uh, one is airflow, so it means that air can get underneath any items that may get hot. And obviously you can see there's quite large heat sinks on some of these things. Uh, so that gives us airflow underneath. Uh, standing it off also does ensure that we've got no chance of uh, any sort of electrical uh, contacts. And it also solves the problem on how exactly you, you actually adhere these things to the board. So, um, you know, if you if you were to use something like hot glue, for example, um, then there's every chance that sort of flex and temperature changes and all that sort of stuff could cause them to uh, crack away. So when you're putting together a board for um, your droid, um, there are some practicalities that really need to be top of your mind. Um, things like, first of all, how much space you've actually got in your droid. Now, if, you, if you've got space for a board this sort of size, this is about 22 centimeters across, I think. I uh, can't remember the height off the top of my head. Um, if you've got space inside your droid, then great. Uh, if not, obviously do consider using both sides of your, uh, of your board and uh, mounting it somewhere, but uh, obviously make sure it's accessible. Um, for me, one of the important things is to make sure I've got a big main switch right near the top so it's easily accessible. Um, that is, of course, assuming that your dome is off, but it makes it nice and easy to sort of uh, flick the power on and off. Uh, also, think about where your mains wiring run is going to go. So obviously, you're going to have uh, a, something that's not on this picture yet is the common ground so there's going to be some common ground and distribution out to each component so every component is going to need uh, a common ground so there's going to be quite a lot of wires going around so think about where your wires are going to run you know if you're going to run perhaps all your grounds up the middle with some nice sort of cable management uh, and cable ties and things like that then that would be great and then you can sort of branch off to each device as you go along up the chain uh, also think about where your battery mains power is going to come into. So as you can see here at the moment, I've got a big screw terminal. So I'm going to have a uh, lead going to that on a um, crimped connection. And what I may end up doing is actually maybe spinning this around and putting my, uh, my common distribution down here. And I'm probably going to use something like a chop block or something like that to do that. Won't be massively pretty, but uh, it'll certainly be functional. Now I've brought in some uh, wire just to sort of give you an idea um, of uh, and have a quick discussion about the kind of wire that you should really be using. Um, you potentially are, are going to be drawing a bit of current through your saber tooth. Don't forget it can support 32 
uh, amps either channel so you know you've got a potential there for 64 amps going through um, and even more if you stalled your motors and you had them on full drive so you don't want to scrimp on your wiring so do use something that's sort of in the region of 14 AWG uh, now if you don't know what AWG is basically it's kind of the, the thickness of the wire it stands for average wire gauge and the lower the number the thicker the wire gets so in other words uh, this is 14 uh, AWG. If it was 32 AWG, it would be more like this sort of thickness. So uh, the the lower the number, the higher number of amps effectively you're able to um, cope without overstressing your wire. I would also recommend that you don't um, sort of scrimp and get really really cheap wire. Get something you know nice quality, some silicon wire ideally, um, because um, that's going to give you the best performance. Another consideration is back driving. Now, what back driving means is basically pushing your droid or allowing it to be rolled along with uh, all the electronics still connected. So effectively, if you're using DC motors, uh, brushless is a different sort of beast altogether. We're talking about DC using uh, the Sabertooth 32. Um, now, this, as it happens, this is a regenerative regenerative oh, I can't even say that uh, it regenerates energy so uh, when the droid is pushed uh, the the magnets and the motors and everything start effectively acting as a dynamo so you're pushing energy back into the system so that is also something we need to be uh, concerned and mindful of now what I uh, do on my droid if I'm pushing it any great distance it'll cope with um, you know with a short sort of amount of uh, distance uh, but if you're going to be pushing it any, any sort of distance on mine uh, without uh, being powered, then I actually have got connectors in line between the outputs on the Sabertooth and the motors themselves, and I simply pull those disconnectors apart. Um, if you've got some heavy-duty switches, then uh, that's also something you could put in line, so effectively you disable the drive um, on each motor through its own switch. Okay, so we're back. It's a little bit later, um, so I wanted to show you the progress I've made today. Um, you'll notice that things have shuffled around uh, a little bit since um, the first uh, couple of shots. So the fuse box is now mounted down here. The uh, red cable here is the input to the fuses, which then obviously go off to the various components. And you'll notice that that disappears around the back of the board. And that goes up to the big switch and the other terminal or the pole on that big switch goes off down to this red wire which is ultimately going to go to the battery. Likewise the black wire here will go to the negative terminal or uh, minus terminal on, on your battery. Uh, this goes into, I've uh, made up a chock block to do distribution so you can see that all of these are connected and then we've got negative or ground wires coming out so all of our grounds will go together. So from there we've got our um, 12 volt line going into the spark fan. Uh, as per my previous videos, that also is uh, made up with a Y lead to go into the um, Arduino. And there's also a 12 volt feed going into the amplifier. And uh, that is actually on its own fuse over here as well. So um, with the amplifier, uh, I need to wire the input, which is on the left, if that will focus. So I've got in uh, and then the uh, power in the middle and then out, which will go out to the speaker for this particular client. The uh, Sabertooth 32 at the moment, I've just done the power input. As you can see there, we've got uh, 14 AWG wires going to the middle two terminals. Uh, the end two are gonna go off to the motors, so um, that's sort of to be discussed with the client. And the uh, Siren 10 also has got its power main power wires going in at the moment over there. Uh, the outer two terminals on that will be for uh, the dome control uh, or the dome motor, should I say. Uh, so a couple of things left to do. I need to put the serial one wire into there off the Arduino and I need to put the serial one wire also into there. Uh, no need to use the five volt outputs on this particular build. Everything's running at 12 volts on the rest of the board. So uh, also, yep, the main switch up here is such that when the switch is in the up position, it can be removed. Um, what I'll probably do is put a little keychain on there and just tag it onto the actual board so it doesn't get lost. Um, so yeah, that's basically your, your mains, nice big chunky marine standard mains on off switch 
uh, to provide power to the rest of the droid. So a couple of things left to do on this. Um, I'm going to do an audio lead out from the spark fun and into the amplifier I'm using. Um, and that's about it. Oh, the other thing is the USB. Um, I've just stuck to the back side of the board. Now, the reason I've done that was twofold. One, I was kind of running a little bit out of space. I've still got quite a bit of space down here, but what I wanted to do is try and get it a little bit higher up because if this is mounted vertically inside the droid, like so, then um, I want to try and get that receiver up as high as I can. Also, um, what I didn't want to do is put it up so high that it was behind this big metal uh, heat shrink, uh, heat shield, I beg your pardon, uh, which will obviously shield some of the uh, the signal getting to it. So I've tried to do it in such a place where it's not having to do, uh, to do too much work to get out. Uh, although bearing in mind, obviously, it could well be on a droid with metal skins. Anyway, so that's a little bit about power distribution, and I'll... Uh, Get back to you shortly. Okay, so our basic wiring is now complete. Um, I've brought my egg droid out again to uh, help demonstrate the motor wires. And likewise, we've got my uh, analog for the uh, dome motor just there. So the dome motor is plugged into the Siren 10. Uh, the white cables either side of the red and black lead on the Sabre 232 are going off to the, uh, the feet motors on my uh, inverted egg droid. Uh, the amplifier is now plumbed in. Now what I've had to use is uh, one of these things. This is a ground loop isolator and what that does if you don't know is it gets rid of any not, uh, annoying buzzing sound that you may get through your speakers when your system is uh, sort of idle and in standby. Uh, we've also installed a little voltmeter so that will help us to uh, read out our mains voltage and um, obviously that's plumbed in right to the back of um, the main sort of circuit. Um, so we've got our soundboard there, we've got our uh, piggybacked USB uh, extension on our Arduino there. So we'll just have a quick recap on our wiring. Just focus that in there. Uh, so the S1 port on the Sabre 232, which is the white wire, goes off and into the Arduino. Now, uh, just to point out as well that on Arduino, you actually count uh, from the right-hand side in the middle there, sort of trying to focus on the middle of the screen, that's actually port zero or pin zero. So the yellow cable is actually in pin one. Sorry about the jerky video. So uh, you go zero, one, two, three, and then the white lead is in pin four. The blue, lin uh, blue lead is in pin five, and the blue one is going into the S1 port on our Siren 10. So without any further ado, let's fire up the system. Now, I would always recommend that you switch your transmitter on first. It's just good practice. Um, any sort of remote control uh, thing, you always switch on the transmitter first. And uh, really, this isn't any different. So now we'll turn on the mains power. If I try and do this one-handed. So you can see now we've got 12 volts. And the system has just uh, confirmed its connection, and you can see we get the little spinning light round on the uh, transmitter. So now if I move the left stick, as you'd expect, nothing is happening. So effectively, uh, the drive is disabled at the moment, which is how you want it when you first switch on. Obviously, you don't want a runaway droid if this is in your pocket and happens to be sort of facing forward. However, the dome motor is still working, so you can turn the dome round whilst you're in uh, safe mode, so to speak. Uh, all the sounds and everything are uh, working nicely. And as you can probably hear, we get virtually no, virtually no background sort of hiss or buzzing or anything on like that at all. So let's just go into drive. So push the start button, which now gives us drive. So forwards and backwards. Left and right, I'll try and do it a bit slower so it doesn't uh, uh, make the camera sort of rolling shutter effect work. Um, so if those are going the wrong way around on your droid, if it's um, maybe going uh, round in circles when you try to go forwards, just simply swap over one of those pairs of wires, either at this end or on your draw, uh, droid uh, feet end. If the whole thing is going sort of backwards when you mean it to go forwards, then swap both pairs over and uh, that will solve your problems. Um, so that's about it really. Um, it's This is a fairly basic 
um, build. It's a, it's about as basic as you're going to get. Um, there are, are other things you could uh, you could do to sort of uh, bling this out a little bit. Uh, one of the things I would certainly recommend you do is to put some hot glue or something on any point where a pin goes into a socket. So the um, all these pins here are going to have a double hot glue on them just to stop them from rattling out. Uh, likewise, the ones going onto our soundboard. But otherwise, that's it. This system is ready to go, um, ready to be installed. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this little series on how to build Padawan 360. Massive thanks and shout out to Dan Krauss, who came up with the uh, sketch for this for Arduino and uh, for the Xbox 360 controller. And uh, obviously that, uh, that has got some lineage back to the original sort of shadow system. So again, thanks to all the original authors for that. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed watching this series. Speak to you all soon. Bye for now.